episode of the Chemitivit podcast here on YouTube. Um, my name is Camilla. I am a Danish knitter and I live here in Denmark with my family. I work as a teacher and a knitwear designer, so I do it both. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about socks. Uh, I have recently finished my uh, socks on my 9 inch circular needles. Uh, that was my first time ever doing a whole pair of socks on the 9 inch circles, so yay! <laughs> I'm really happy that I actually um, came through with that project. That was, uh, that was rough, but I made it to the end. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, I have some new socks on my needles. I have plans on a pattern and a tutorial I'll talk about. I have some new designs, some yarn, and uh, at the end of this episode I do have a, an unboxing because I just received the yarn from for um, the month of July from the company called It's Yarn. It's a hand dyeing uh, company here in Denmark. So let's start. So um, the only finished object I actually have to show today is um, these socks and the <laughs> I gave these to my youngest Esther for her birthday on June 30 and um, she actually wore these quite a bit. We were just at the summer house for a week and she, <laughs> it was really cold. We had such a nice a few days of summer here in June and then the weather changed and it was just like fall. So we went to the summer house and it was um, not very summery at all. So everybody was freezing a little bit and Esther was wearing her socks and I couldn't tell her not to wear her new socks because mom had to use them for the podcast <laughs> on Thursday. So they look like this. Um, I'm very happy with these socks. Um, this is hand dyed yarn from Fovelbo, uh, Petra in Sweden. And um, this is like a sock kit that I bought from her uh, homepage. Uh, I showed the yarn uh, last in the last episode, but they turned out like this. And um, I was kind of hoping that these would actually be for me, but um, two things: it was Esther's birthday, so that was the perfect um, opportunity to give her a new pair of socks and also the other thing is that I did these on my nine inch circular needles um, it was a struggle I did really end up liking it uh, so it was not as bad as I thought it would be in the beginning it was really hard and I felt mm, I didn't feel comfortable knitting on these small needles but as I progressed through these socks I actually kind of liked it so I'm gonna Maybe I'm going to do that again, actually. The thing is, when I knit on the 9-inch circular needles, my gauge is tighter. So these actually fitted Esther's feet uh, so much better because her feet are uh, like slimmer than mine, but still as long as mine. So I did knit them in my size, so they have the right length. And because of the gauge, they fit her feet perfectly. I did post a picture on these socks on Instagram. So you can uh, go check out how they look uh, on actually on a pair of feet if you are interested. But um, this I did uh, with the afterthought heel. And that is my second time working the afterthought heel. And uh, I think they work really well. On these socks I only knit four plain rounds before I started doing the increases. And for these uh, socks and for Esther's size, that was um, just the right amount. That was perfect. I think if they were for me, I would probably do like five or six plain rows before doing the increases. But um, yeah, that's a thing I will add in my pattern. So just think about that. And I think the first time you do the afterthought heel, you'll just have to try it and see what works for you. And then after you try it on, you can tell if you need a few extra rows or not. So that's just... Um, I think trial and error for this with the socks. Okay, so these are done. My only finished object actually. But I do have another pair of socks that is almost done. Um, you can see where I put in the black light bulb stitch markers. On this side is for where I'm gonna do my afterthought heel. So I'm gonna um, pick up stitches on the row above 
and the row below and then I'm gonna cut the yarn exactly where this middle light bulb stitch marker is and I'm gonna save this because I'm gonna do a tutorial and I'm gonna do it on this sock so if you have never done this before there are plenty of uh, really good tutorials out there I'm just gonna do one so that I can actually link to that in my own pattern and uh, I think it's it's more then I can explain in my own words how I think this works uh, out and um, I know a lot of the Danish knitters would like also to have a tutorial uh, actually in Danish there's so many English um, tutorials out there and not that many Danish tutorials I'm just gonna do both and um, yeah if you know someone who has a good tutorial for the afterthought heel just use that that's fine it's not going to be uh, any more different. I know that the Crazy Sock Lady has one and the Kirby Wurby has one and they are perfect. That's how uh, I learned how to do it. It's just by watching tutorials on YouTube. So it's not like I invented this method. This is an old, well-known method for doing the after heel, uh, afterthought heel. So nobody owns the right to that one. <laughs> I'm just going to offer uh, in my own words how to do that. So I have the second sock right here. So I'm still working on that one. I actually have two more rows before I need to place my stitches for the heel and I'm good to go for that one. So these are um, both done cuff down. I'm going to do a tutorial on how to cast on in the toe so you can start knitting in the round from the beginning. I really like to knit from the toe up when you have scraps and I actually do have a decent amount of really nice scraps for socks so I would love to do that. Um, from the toe up so you know exactly how much yarn you have and you don't end up with a sock with no toes so um for scraps if you want to use like a whole skein and you want to use it all up it's always a good idea to knit them toe up some i think for the pattern i will do just a normal sock pattern uh top down and i will publish that and then eventually when i get uh to work like tutorials and do a pattern for the toe up. I'll just add that to the pattern. So if you buy the first pattern and I update it with the toe up version, you can just, um, I will, you know, Ravelry will let you know that there has been a new <clears throat> update to the pattern and you can just download the new update. I think I'm gonna do it like that. If I change my mind, <laughs> I will let you know. But I think that's uh, how I'm gonna do it. So I think that's it for socks. No, wait, I have one more thing because I have discovered a new yarn. Uh, it is a German uh, yarn company. I don't know what happened to this. I have to fix this so it doesn't look messy on the video. Um, this is a German um, company, but the Italian is spun in uh, the yarn is spun in Italy, and it is called. Um, I'll just show you the label so I don't say anything right wrong. Its name is oh let me do it like this, Pasquale. Uh, and then it says Filati Naturali. So it is uh, it's an Italian name, and this just means that this is all natural. And what it is made of is that it's made of merino and silk and uh, rami. And rami is like a, it's not nettle and it's not linen, but it's it's from a plant. So it's the same kind of uh, strength it has to it. And um, actually, I have a skein of yarn here that has not been caked um, it looks like this the name of this yarn is Pinta and it is the merino silk Rami um, and this I caked this one up because I just love this color so I'm gonna knit a pair of socks in this I was uh, contacted by this company if I wanted to try the yarn and I don't say yes to everything, but I really, really, really wanted to try yarn for this company because they just have really high quality yarns and really uh, luxurious yarns. I didn't pick the cashmere yarn or anything. I just wanted to try this nice sock yarn. And I like it because not only is it good for socks, but it's it just feels very nice. I would love to do like a big show or something in this yarn. So uh, I... I am so glad I got the opportunity to test with this, test the yarn. You know, sometimes it's just nice to try and see how it feels when you knit with it. 
and even though it looks nice in the store it's not always the same when you start knitting you never know if you love a, lot, a yarn until you have actually knit in it so i'm really happy about this uh, yarn from uh, pasquale <laughs> pasquale see si. so uh well maybe i should actually also show you some other yarn that i bought myself this is a um, Danish hand dyer that does self-striping yarn and uh, I have a thing for self-striping yarn. I just, um, it's so funny to knit socks that are self-striping because it's just so interesting to see the next color and I just couldn't help myself. Look at this, the yarn, uh, the color is called Back to the 80s and uh, as, a, as a kid growing up in the 80s, that is just so true. These were the colors. I love this. And they have a contrasting purple, if you want to do like a contrasting heel and toe. And this is from uh, an Etsy shop called A Lonely Sock Lady Yarn. I will link that down below. I think that's cute. I actually bought two because I thought they were so, so much fun, these striping yarns. Here it is. Look at this. Blue, gray, brown, yellow. This one is called, I love funny names. This one is called, I lost my wallet in the river. <laughs> and it has like a mm, dark gray, almost black looking. I will just show you the name right here. A lonely sock lady. Yarn. And these things, um, Etsy's search function is really mm, not always that great. So I will link to the shop down below so you don't have to get frustrated by looking for the uh, A Lonely Sock Lady yarn. A Lonely Sock Lady yarn from Etsy. Good. That was all for socks. Sock yarn, socks, finished socks, upcoming sock pattern, upcoming tutorials for the upcoming sock pattern i will all let you know when that is done on instagram i think i'll just let you know on instagram hmm oh yeah i do have another finished object that i actually showed you uh, in the last episode but i just want to let you know that it's out on revelry now it is the cactus flower sweater this is a size extra small uh, with the Dragonfire, Jade and Modern Fair Isle from Madeline Tush and my own one that I showed you last time in the um, As Ever uh, Subtle Flame Glitter and no, Modern Fair Isle Subtle Flame with Glitter and the As Ever uh, in the bottom and I have used for this one the Mohair from we have I can add in the peach and it has you can tell you can tell it was cold in the summer house this week I wore this sweater so much I love it it is totally my favorite sweater now but uh, yeah the mohair does this in the beginning and it will stop but uh, yeah, it does peel a little bit but that's just um yeah I'm not gonna show this anymore I'm just gonna let you know that it is actually out on memory now what else? Um, I have a new, I have a new pattern coming up. Let me just show you. Um, I have a friend, a very good friend of mine. Uh, we have been friends since we were, I think, seven or eight years old. Uh, she lives in Sweden and she has two beautiful boys and uh, now she is expecting a girl and um, I already knit her a blanket for one of her boys but I just know what happens when you have two brothers and uh, there is a girl 
she's gonna have to um, use all the baby clothes from her brothers and there is a risk that, that she will have no pink and I am a mom of only girls so uh, my girls had a lot of pink and now I'm gonna make sure that this cute little baby up there is gonna have something pink as well so I'm gonna I have designed this baby blanket and it's corner to corner so when it is done it will be a square I have to block it pretty much because right now this shape is uh, not squared <laughs> it's a little like a diamond but I will block that when it's wet and make it a square so but um I actually just did I did uh, another version to begin with where I would just cast on all the stitches and just knit up but I was just I wasn't really happy about it I thought it was a little too boring and um, I wanted a little bit of structure or a little bit of lace or something and I just didn't know exactly how to get that into the pattern and then I was so happy about knitting my corner to corner uh, blanket in all my scrap yarn so I thought hmm, maybe I can uh, do the blanket corner to corner as well just knit it not crochet and I did that and I started right down here and I made it all the way up to here so the last stripe the purple one is where the increases stop or the decreases stop and then I begin the increases here with the mustardy color um, there will be a pattern for this maybe not until September it doesn't take very long because I'm knitting this on the four millimeter four millimeter needle in one strand of pure silk this is a Yaipua silk from a Danish brand called BC Gan BC yarn BC Gan I think it's just in the colorway natural it's something I have had um, laying around for ages actually um, but it's thought such a new a new baby girl <laughs> needs silk and the other is just a strand of normal Highland wool this is the Black Hill Highland wool from a Danish company named Ganusel that is in the located in the northern part of Denmark but you can actually use any kind of Highland wool. This is like 275 meters uh, per 50 grams. And I know there are several yarn companies that has a similar um, yarn. Or you can just mix together whatever you want. I have, um, I, I like the, um, what happens to the colors when you have one yarn that is worked uh, work with this through the whole project so I only stripe with the Highland wool so this is there all the time and that is what gives it this um, what is that called marbled look I really like that so it tones down the pink and uh, all these colors let me just I have the bag here with all the colors that I use in my Steven and Penelope bag that I brought and you can tell that for example the pink one uh, on its own is very it's not very uh, bright but it still has a lot of color I think this one is called rosebud not rosebud but rosebud <laughs> and uh, so you can tell this is the stripe I have here below the purple one so when you knit it uh, with this strand of silk it just gives it this so maybe I can hold it all together like that. Can you see? Yeah. So I really like how the colors turns out when you have this neutral silk uh, all the all the time. I really like that. I had a picture on this on Instagram. I was knitting uh, when we were in the summer house, and I just took a picture of me holding this blanket, and. Um, my uh, aunt wrote me that she um, the colors of this blanket reminded her of a children's book uh, called 
a baby sister for Francis. And it's so funny because that book in Dennis is called um, Amelia for in Lille Sister. And I remember that book. It was my, one of my favorite children's books. It was always at my grandmother's house. And I really, really liked that book. And I googled um, the cover of the book and I, I saw some pictures from inside the book and it's true. These, it's totally all these colors. This, uh, it's the colorways of this shawl, oh not shawl, <laughs> the blanket is the exact same colors that are inside this book. So I am going to name this um, blanket, I'm going to name it a baby blanket for Francis. And it's not that the baby in Sweden is going to be named Francis, but it's because uh, of this book. So it's a tribute to the books and the colors in this book. Um, so yeah, once it's done, that's going to be the name. And I would actually like a few test knitters for this. I, uh, and if you, it doesn't matter if you are English or Danish, I'm going to do the pattern in both languages. So let me know if you're interested in this, you can, um, Send me an email or you can comment down below. No, you can't comment down below because I need to get in contact with you. So if you're interested in this. Hi, I'm just uh, popping in. I was just watching uh, the podcast or in a, not watching the podcast, but I was um, getting ready to edit the podcast. And I have to save myself because I think the best idea if you want to be a test knitter for me is that you actually join my a group on Ravelry called uh, the Cavendish Knit Group, or it's just called Cavendish Knit. But please join Ravelry and write me there because then I can give you all the information needed. And I think in the future, when I call for test knitters, it would be in the Ravelry group. So join my Ravelry group. I will make a uh, a topic in there called the a baby blanket for Francis. So. <laughs> Please join my Ravelry group if you want to be a test knitter on this one. Um, I think it's just the it's way easier to do it that way because that'll be the way I do this uh, in the future anyway. So forget all my babbling, everything I just said. If you want to test knit for me uh, this time and maybe also in the future, please join my Ravelry group. There's not many members uh, because I have not used it uh, for anything yet, but we will do that from now on. So please join me. I will see you there. Good. I think that was it for the blanket. Um, then where I have my summer house is in the northern part of Denmark. And in the northern part of Denmark is a store and it is Isaiah's store in Tverstel. And Isaiah is a yarn, uh, she's a designer. Her and her daughter both are uh, knitwear designers. Extremely um, talented. Uh, ladies both of them um but they have this showroom uh, very close to where i have my summer house and it is uh it's gorgeous it's just when you go in there it's just beautiful the yarn so it's beautiful and of course she has all her yarns and i i got tempted because you can't go into that yarn store and not get so tempted and i really didn't want to spend a whole lot of money because uh, it's dangerous to uh, i have so much yarn <laughs> and i really don't need that much but I actually knew that I was actually looking for this. I'm not sure it really shows the mm, the right color. It's it's the colorway number um, 28, and I don't know if it, it has a name. I don't think so. But it's um it's like a coral red. It's just so beautiful, and I also bought. <laughs> This one because this is my favorite color from Isaiah. It's the colorway 62 and I love number 62. All her yarns in number 62 has this pink gray. Well the silver hair is not gray but she has like a highland bowl that is a little gray and pink at the same time and I really like that. But these two together, hmm, I'm not sure what this is going to be but it's gonna be something for me. That's for sure. These are like my favorite colorways. So I just want to show you these two. And I think that's all I'm going to show you today. <laughs> because I have an unboxing. And I'm not going to do a 55 uh, minutes long podcast this time. I'm going to try to um, 
do this as shorter. I would really like the podcast to be around 30 minutes plus 35. So um, I have already talked for 25 minutes. So I'm going to do the unboxing now. What? Uh, it comes in uh, this uh, green bag. It has my name and address on the front, so I'm not going to show you all that. Um, I have just ripped up the tape. I have not sneak peeked yet. I will do that with you. If you are a member of the Suck Club from It's Yarn, and you have not yet opened the yarn from July, I'm just going to tell you to stop watching because I'm going to spoil it now. Okay, let me see, I have everything, yes, I'm going to put that over here, again it comes in the nice silk paper, uh, pink this time, you can see the logo, it's yarn, I know they had actually had to close down for new members because uh, um, they had problems with uh, delivery, but they are back. So if you are interested in being a member of the yarn club from It's Yarn, you can uh, sign up now. And here is the yarn for uh, July. Do, 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 do. It's a 75% merino and 20 75% merino and 25% nylon. I'm just gonna split these two so you can see the this color a little better. It's pretty. It's like um orange, almost peachy apricot color, and some green speckles, some red speckles, a little it looks like a little brownish speckles here. I think this sucks. This yarn is really gorgeous. It's not the color I would normally pick out for me, I don't think. But um, that's the fun, I think, uh, about joining a yarn club. Is that you get something you would usually maybe not pick out. Um, and now that I look at it, the more I look at it, the prettier it gets. And I'm not sponsored by It's Yarn. I buy this for my own money. I will always let you know if I get something for free or if it is something I bought myself. And this I totally bought myself. Good. So that was the uh, the main yarn. And this is the contrasting color. It's like a deep red. I don't know if it shows that well on the camera. It looks as if it's... It kind of looks, um, I don't know, lighter on the camera than it does in real life. If I could take it away a little bit. It's really mm, like deep red, almost burgundy in some places. I think this is a, actually an interesting couple. Mm. But you can choose not to use the contrasting with this one. And you can just do the a pair of socks on this and use this for, I don't know scrappy project or something i don't know but this was the that was the unboxing for today yeah really like that oh i forgot to say that the socks i worked on that um that i showed you in the beginning that i'm gonna do for the um, tutorial today i'm gonna i'm not gonna do today but i'm gonna film it today who you do not gonna see it today but I think I'm going to film it today. It's also from uh, the sock yarn from It's Yarn. And this is the, the yarn I unboxed the last time. Which was this white and uh, with purple contrasting. Purple or eggplant color. Yeah. I think that was it, guys. 29 minutes. <gasps> no. <laughs> I forgot something. I forgot my basket of enjoyment this is a pure basket of joy I'm gonna move some of all my stuff here so I have a little bit of room this is um, I'm so surprised that I mm, I'm so surprised that how mm, hooked I am on this project I am NOT a crocheter I have 
yeah I, as i've said earlier uh in another episode i have always liked to crochet blankets and stuff i can crochet anything that is supposed to look like something if my life depended on it but crocheting a blanket i like and um when i was at the isa store i bought myself a new crochet needle did i need it no did i like the color yes is that the reason why i bought it absolutely and uh, i'm glad to say that it's also a very nice uh crochet uh, needle to actually have in your hand. I haven't I haven't done more than like a two or three uh, um, Crochet stitches with it. So I'm not gonna I'm, I can't really tell if it's better than the one I had. I don't think it's better I think it's just as good because the one I have is this one and um, This is one I usually use and it's a very good crochet needle. There's nothing wrong with it except that I just uh, like this color better. What can you do? Sorry. Okay, so my corner to corner blanket is uh, growing. Okay, I have a lot of <laughs> I have a lot of yarn here that doesn't belong. I don't know scraps, and a little bit of more scraps. I actually, if I only have like a few meters of something, I save it and I put it in the basket because uh, you know I just tie small knots, so it doesn't take too long to like stitch in the ends. I don't do that. Okay, so, okay, I've showed you and talked about all this before, but I've just recently added this Adelaide color. It's a Madeline Tosh single merino, what it's called, uh, merino light, I think, and it is the Adelaide color. So it's, uh, it's going pretty good. I really like it. And I found some, this is a scrap I have from the Danish hand dyer, hand dye the decay. I'm going to add that look. It's, I think it's the colorway number 16. I think so because I can see all my favorite colors in here. And I have some green. This is the jade glitter from Metal and Touch that I have used in the cactus flower sweater. And then I have some other nice scraps in here. That I'm gonna add in so that is actually guys I did something um, because I was I came to think about it that um, what to do with all my DK weight scraps and then I thought huh maybe I should actually work on another corner to corner crochet blanket with my DK uh, weight scraps and I just started in some this is some old, uh, this is scraps from my Hermanu shawl in the yarn from um, Faux Velbo. So I'm knitting, I'm not knitting, I'm crocheting on a 4.5 millimeter. That's a seven in the space. And I, I don't have that much scrappy. I have a little... Um, some speckled, also from Fovelbo, and some not speckled. I think it's these are cash merino and another um, squishy merino. I think from this is leftovers from a cardigan I have named Eska's Baby Cardigan, and this is scraps from uh, my hat, the bubble hat. So every now and then I do work, I uh, do design projects on TK with yarn and uh, every now and then I do have a little scrap. So I'm just gonna put this in my TK weight scrap with my knitting, not knitting, crochet needle. So I have a little corner to corner from my single merino yarn and I have one from my DK weight yarn. It's a good way to use your scraps. And because I don't have that many DK weight yarns, uh, yarn scraps, it's not gonna take too much time because every now and then when I have a little lift I'll just work that. That's it. The next time I'm gonna a podcast I'm gonna take you to my summer house because uh, yeah it'll just be fun to change the location so you don't always look at the same stuff uh, that you can see uh, some other um, yeah some other a new location and uh, 
yeah, just show you uh, what it's like uh, in the northern part of Denmark and the summer house. So I'm going to take you there with me um, next week. I'm going to film next week or the week after. I don't know. I'm not going to promise anything, but I'm going to take you there. And I um, also there was someone who asked me if I would show the room that I'm sitting in. And I will do that. I just have to clean it up a little bit because the, not, the whole room is not my uh, own yarn room. I have uh, my husband has a corner over here and it doesn't look uh, very um, neat and yarn like. It looks more like a big computer screen and a big leather <laughs> um, comfy chair. So, but I will do a little film because I have some stuff uh, behind the camera and I have some stuff back here and have all these boxes and stuff. So I will do an episode where I talk about what is on in all my boxes and all my yarn and stuff like that. And also I, I did say, <laughs> I've said that every time that I'm going to do, I'm going to show you all my knitting bags and what do I have in my knitting bags. Uh, actually I look down here because I have a, I have a, I have a, I'm going to show you something. Look, this is Teddy. He doesn't like to sit on my lap, but uh, this is my let me take this. This is my dog, Teddy. Okay, so uh, that's it for now. I think that's it. Okay, I will see you uh, next time, and I will be podcasting from my summer house. If you do have any questions or anything you're curious about or want to know, please comment down below. And if you are a Danish knitter and you don't want to ask anything in English, just write in Danish. That is fine. Okay, I think that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and please like. That really actually does mean a lot for the uh, supporting this channel. So take care. See you. Have a good summer. <laughs>